This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm joined by Amir Khan here in Dubai. Let's start with Everlast, of course, sponsoring this huge fight tonight between uh, Jamel Herron and Carl Frampton. They've also signed 52 fighters re recently, putting a massive commitment into boxing. What do you think about that, Amir? I think it's brilliant. You know, it's great for boxing. And Everlast has been going on for a very long time. It's a company that's been around in boxing from the Muhammad Ali days, you know. So it's great that, you know, he's back on boxing big time and he's supporting shows like this because you know what MTK are doing in, in in Dubai you know not many people are doing things in Dubai now me being the president of the Middle East WBC hopefully now we can maybe work with the likes of MTK and other promoters who want to come to Dubai and the Middle East region. Yeah obviously Ahmed Siddiqui is staging this show tonight with D4G promotions and um, yeah he's making big moves here. Definitely look it's all about taking that risk and obviously, uh, Siddiqui's made that, taken that risk and put a great show on today. It is a good show. I know we had to keep that social distancing, uh, which it's worked out well. You know, you've got about 60 people in there. They kept it very limited, but that's what it's all about. But look, I think boxing needs to come to this region for sure. And I think by having shows like this and having the TV supporting it, obviously you guys are always supporting all the MTK shows and obviously Siddiqui and his team as well. So I think it's brilliant. That's what boxing needs, really. How is it going with the WBC? Mm going good now so we're in talks of uh, moving our headquarters to a certain uh, country um, we have already uh, now finalized our belt the Middle East belt um, it's amazing because you know obviously Mauricio took that uh, took, took, I mean I took that chance of asking Mauricio look I don't mind doing the w can I become the president of the Middle East I can take boxing to another level and he obviously trusted in me believed in me so now it's my time to kind of deliver get them big fights over here get the title um, you know, get the title over here. We've made a title just for the Middle East itself. So, yeah, I mean, um, you know, some big moves that are going to happen uh, in the very near future, especially in the likes of Saudi Arabia, where my first fight, I was one of the first fighters who fought there. And then obviously now there's Qatar on the tables. There's Dubai, for example, like tonight. Abu Dhabi, uh, Abu Dhabi as well. Uh, so there's so many big fights that, uh, that can happen in the Middle East. So we're here to make it even bigger. Because of that work you're doing with the WBC, is there potential that you might not fight again? No, no, I want to, I want one more dance, you know. Um, I want to get back in that ring one more time. I mean, now, look, Cal Buckle was the one that was calling me all this time. I mean, now it's come to a stage where I've said, let's make it happen. And obviously it's funny because Cal Buckle's not really responding. Now, I've left it to uh, Eddie to get the fight and make the fight happen. Uh, I was on the phone with him last couple of weeks ago. So, I mean, look, let's make the fight happen. Um, it's still a big British fight. People will want to still tune in. I know it may be still a bit past... Uh, the prime of our careers, but it's still a fight that people would like to see to see who would be the winner, who would, who would who would come out the better fighter. Yeah, I think it's fair to say both of you have, you know, gone past your peak mm. days, so it's still a competitive fight. Definitely. Look, end of the day, you know, um, you know, we we still fighters. End of the day, we will go in there and give it our all. So yeah, I mean, look, it'll be a massive fight regardless. We've been world champion. We've fought the biggest names in the in in, in boxing. So, yeah, I think it definitely makes sense. And how have those phone calls gone with Eddie? Oh, Eddie's brilliant. You know, Eddie, Eddie is brilliant with me. Um, one thing about Eddie Hearn, whenever we work together or even negotiate something together, um, you know, it's gone really, really well. You know, he's a very, he's a decent promoter. He's very professional at what he does. Even when I went to go and fight Crawford, you know, I, I went to Eddie and sat with him and I said, look, this is what we're going to do. Obviously, I had to, I had to pay that release fee. But end of the day, he still allowed me to go and fight Crawford even when I was signed up with Matchroom. I had that one more fight with them. So, you know, I mean, look, with me, he's been good. End of the day, he made us good money. So we all made, we all happy. Um, so for me to work with him again is something I definitely will consider, yeah. And when you spoke to him on the phone, had he spoke to Kel Brook about this fight? Yeah, I mean, look, um, he spoke to Kel's father, I think. But um, Eddie didn't say much. But he said, look, let me leave it with me for a couple of weeks. Um, and we'll see what happens, but I've not heard nothing back. I know Eddie's busy with him, with the shows in America and everything else, but um, look, it's a fight that, you know, we want, and uh, let's see let's see if it, can, if, it can, if it can be made. If the fight does get made with Kelbrook, yeah. what happens? Look, the fight gets made, we fight, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, what happens in the fight, you mean? Yeah. I mean, look, end of the day, um, he's very confident, I'm very confident. Look, um, look, I don't see it going past six rounds, you know, with someone like Kelbrook. You know, um, yeah, I think under six rounds, I'll, I'll probably get a stoppage. And is there a message to Team Brook and Kel himself? No, no, at all. You know, end of the day, look, we're very professional. Uh, Kel's done great things in his career. And, um, yeah, I respect him. I think he's a great fighter. And definitely, it'll be massive, massive for the UK fans. 
So, yeah, just let's just sign up and get the fight done now. Quickly get your thoughts on rumours of a potential fight between Manny Pacquiao and Terence Crawford mm. landing in Abu Dhabi on June 5th. Nothing confirmed yet. Mm. Uh, do you like that fight? Oh, it's a brilliant fight. You know, both fighters uh, are world champions. Um, is it going to get mid? Obviously, no. With the, when you look at it, with two different promoters on board, Manny signed with Al Heyman, or is he still signing with him? No one knows. Uh, Bob Iram has Crawford top rank, so... Is that fight going to happen? I don't know. Um, I'd like it to happen because it'll be such a great fight. I mean, look, in my opinion, I got Crawford winning that fight. I think Crawford is a younger, fresher fighter. Don't get me wrong, Manny is still very dangerous. You know, being that southpaw fighter, quick speed, he has everything it takes. But um, do you think it'll happen? I don't know. I, don't, I know there's talks of maybe maybe it happening in the Middle East. So who knows? I mean, look, if it does happen, it'll be massive. Um, it'll be a fight I'd like to see. And fans very frustrated that Terence Crawford, Errol Spent, is nowhere close yeah. to being made. Yeah. Do, you, do you share that same frustration as the yeah. fans do? No, as, as a, even though you're a fighter, you know, you're still a, you, know, you still love the sport, you're still a fan of the sport. And I'd like to see that fight, who would come out the winner, who would come out the better, and who's really the number one welterweight in the world. So yeah, it'd be a good fight. Uh, but I'm surprised it's not being made. I mean, there is a lot, of, I'm sure there'll be a lot of money on the table and some country will pick that fight to host it. Who knows, you know, so, but, you never hear them both, you know, talking to me. I see that they met each other, they spoke to each other, but it seems that promoters don't want it to happen, so I don't know why. How did the documentary go down? Ah, oh, documentary was fun. I mean, look, I, I think it's good because people get to see the real side of me, you know. And um, me, and my, I'm a family man. You know, I made my mistakes in my, in, in, in the past. And I want to show people what it's like, you know, what my life's like. And um, it's just great to get the great feedback from people. So um, feedback's been brilliant, though. And, um, yeah, man, it's been fun filming as well, so I want to thank BBC for that. Um, but you guys can still watch it on BBC iPlayer or you can watch it on BBC One once a week. So it's a good show, man. And uh, Luckily, I've filmed everything now, but uh, we are in talks so of maybe doing some uh, more in the future. Good to hear. And just finally, to cap off, um, you've worked with Oscar De La Hoya, uh, Al Heyman, mm. Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, everyone. Mm. You're now managing a fighter. Tell me about him and also why you've gone into management I mean I mean you see promoting shows could be a little bit difficult um, I've done a couple of shows in Pakistan recently worked hard but I mean we still managed to get through it but um, managing fighters I think just helping them so we've got a young fighter called Tal Singh uh, I like the way he is I like him um, you know he's, he's, he's the way he is as a fighter his attitude's amazing and he wants to be a champion in the day look he wants to reach the top and obviously by me helping him supporting him putting him on the right path you know, um, and just advising him in the right way which fight to take, which not to take, and who to fight, and how to move up the ladders, maybe which promoter to join as well. And today I don't want to be a promoter, I want to be more of a manager to manage and help support fighters. So let's see what happens. Look, I know what mistakes I made in my career. Hopefully, I, you know, young fighters don't make those mistakes, so I can share that love with them. So I want to go into the management quite hard. You know, I want to start looking after the young fighters. You know, God's been kind, I've made a lot of money in the game, and I think it's about now uh, uh, spreading that love and that support to all the young fighters out there. Well, Amir Khan, I really do appreciate your time here on IFL TV in Dubai. Enjoy Frampton Heron, and uh, hopefully we talk soon, all right? Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Thank you, guys.